person left to get. Let's go. It sure seems like our favorite human voodoo doll may not have survived the apocalypse. But let's be honest, does anyone actually stay dead in this show? You are back. I didn't imagine it. Well, I might be imagining all of you. I'm not 100% sure that any of this is real. I'm gonna bet this isn't the last we'll see of Queenie, so let's explore everything we know about one of the coven's most popular witches. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel for our weekly episode breakdowns of American Horror Story Apocalypse and more of our character deep dives. We've already covered Cordelia Good, Madison Montgomery, Constance and Tate Langdon, Misty Day, and Myrtle Snow. Let us know who you'd like to see us cover next. Queenie is a powerful, natural-born witch who is a descendant of Tachuba. Back in the 1690s, Tachuba was an enslaved woman who was the first to be accused of witchcraft in Salem. Queenie didn't grow up in a stable home. In fact, she grew up in foster care for much of her life. In 2012, before moving to Miss Robichaux's Academy, she lived in Detroit and worked behind the cash register at a fast food joint. By the way, Chubby's Fried Chicken is a real place, although it's located in New Orleans, not Detroit. Anyways, Queenie had to deal with some pretty horrible customers there. One time, a customer complained about his order. The asshole even insulted Queenie about her weight. Big time no-no. Yeah, I'll have the number nine, a deep fried arm combo meal, please. Of course, there was no evidence to prove that Queenie did this. There were witnesses, but no one believed that she was a witch. She did, however, lose her job and the incident made the local newspaper. That's exactly how Cordelia was able to track her down and bring her to Miss Robichaux's academy. Let's talk about powers. Queenie is the only witch with voodoo powers. That means any damage that she takes can transfer over to another person. <laughs> Right. I'm a human voodoo doll, bitch. Any hurt on me gonna go right back to you. As with her sister witches, Queenie has a knack for casting spells and rituals, but she has a little bit of a twist. Thanks to her unique background, she's able to dip into witchcraft and voodoo. She's also mastered five of the seven wonders, including telekinesis, concilium, transmutation, divination, and dissentium. And even when Hank Fox hunted her down with silver bullets, Queenie proved that she was immune to that stuff. Oh, and also when it comes to math, Queenie is a damn genius. Don't test her. You must have got a D in math because there's only seven pieces. Actually, sir, I got an A in math, all of them. Calculus, trig, advanced algebra. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Our first introduction to Queenie is during Zoe's arrival at the Academy. Madison, Nan, and Queenie try to scare the living shit out of the new kid on her first day. We quickly learn that Queenie doesn't get along with Madison. No one really does. They bicker back and forth throughout the coven season, and even more so in this season of Apocalypse. We absolutely love this rivalry. He freed me and brought me down here to get you. Why? Honestly, I don't know. I was trying to talk him out of it the whole way here. I told him that you are a stone cold bitch, and that you're exactly where you belong. Now, Queenie's arc in coven is tied closely to Madame Delphine LaLaurie. You know, that disgusting racist that tortured and murdered countless people. After she's resurrected by Fiona Good, LaLaurie becomes the personal slave to Queenie. Queenie very much enjoys this, as do we. You are going to be Queenie's personal slave. <laughs> and Queenie, you ask her to do whatever you need done. Make your bed, scrub your toilet, I don't give a shit. Sweet. There's nothing I hate more than a racist. Then comes Bastian the former house slave of the LaLaurie family. Delphine accused him of raping her daughter, but he didn't actually do it. Despite that, she tortured him and turned him into a minotaur. Not sure about the science behind all of this, but he comes back from the dead thanks to some dark magic. One night when they're cooking in the kitchen, they notice Bastian outside the academy. Queenie saves Delphine and tries her best to calm him down. In one of the weirdest sequences in American Horror Story history, she seduces the minotaur. Yep, that actually happened. Queenie is on the brink of death, but luckily Fiona brings her back to life. Madame LaLaurie puts all that racist stuff aside, for the moment at least, and thanks Queenie for saving her from the Minotaur. That brings us to Halloween night, when a bunch of zombies, which include Delphine's daughters, attack the coven. Queenie finds herself alone, trapped in one of the bedrooms, and it's Delphine that saves her. I guess they're even. Meanwhile, Madison is still missing. She was actually killed by Fiona. Zoe, Nan, and Queenie continue their search for her, and they decide to play some board games. Unfortunately, this spirit board brings back the Axeman. 
a local serial killer who fancies jazz and chopping people into pieces with an axe. Queenie also played a part in Myrtle Snow's execution. See, Fiona had Queenie use her voodoo powers to burn Myrtle's hands with acid, linking her to the attack on Cordelia. Now, we know Queenie owed Fiona one after she saved her life, but this doesn't sit well with her. She didn't know that Myrtle would be burned at the stake. Thankfully, Myrtle wasn't gone for good. Fast forward to a quiet night at the Academy as Queenie and Delphine have some late night munchies, but there's no food in the house. Queenie decides to take her new BFF to her first fast food experience. I dragged my ass all the way here from Detroit to be with my quote, sister witches. And instead, I'm sitting in the fast food parking lot at three in the morning with an immortal racist. How'd that happen? Nothing like burgers with your racist maid. By the way, Ted's Fro Stop is an actual spot in New Orleans, and it looks pretty damn good. Queenie soon feels out of place with the witches, so she makes a visit over to Marie Laveau's. Marie offers her a place to stay if she brings Delphine back to her. Queenie wrestles with the idea at first, but once she finds out exactly the type of things that Delphine did to her slaves, she has no problem with it. She tricks Delphine into thinking that she'll be getting a makeover at Cornrow City. Not exactly. Queenie brings her back to the voodoo queen who gets some sweet revenge. No. So Queenie ditches the witches and joins Team Voodoo. One late night while walking alone, she's attacked by a homeless man and she ends up killing him. Then she rips out his heart in front of Zoe and Madison. She needs the heart for Marie's voodoo magic. Queenie is led to believe that she will be more powerful than any of the witches, Supreme included, since she's a mix of both voodoo and witch. It gets even crazier from there. Marie cuts off Delphine's head, sends it to Fiona, then Queenie takes back the head and gives it a history lesson. Seriously. One stubborn old lady head, you know. I gotta go. After being attacked by Marie Laveau with her voodoo magic, Hank Fox barges into the hair salon and shoots everyone he possibly can. Even Queenie gets hit. But before he can kill Marie, Queenie uses her voodoo powers and blows off his head. Queenie doesn't return to the coven until Nan's funeral. She shows up to the cemetery with Delphine, whose head is reattached to her body. But at least now she's on a leash. And that's for coming back. Back home at the Academy, an apologetic Cordelia confides in Queenie that she may be the next Supreme. See, Hank shot Queenie with one of those fancy silver bullets, which would normally kill a witch, but she survived. Apparently, she's more powerful than anyone suspected. Queenie searches the house for Marie, but can't find her. She attempts to send Shum and travels to her personal hell, back in that Detroit fast food joint. She meets with Papa Langba in Hell and then back again at the Academy. She convinces him to strip Marie and Delphine of their immortality. Queenie gives Delphine one last chance to turn her life around, but she declines. Finally, Queenie kills Delphine, sending her to Hell for eternity. Hell! Straight to Hell. Oh, it's impossible. I'm immortal. Wrong. Cordelia and Queenie head back to the cemetery in search of Misty Day. They find the tomb that Madison buried her in, and Queenie proves just how strong she is. She performs Vitalum Vitalis, and Misty is brought back from the dead. That brings us to the Seven Wonders. Queenie joins the competition against Zoe, Madison, and Misty in order to find the coven's next leader. All four witches easily pass the first test of telekinesis. Queenie then shows off her mastery of mind control on Misty. Unfortunately, Misty's the only one that doesn't make it back from her personal hell. Then Zoe dies while teleporting across the front yard, and Madison refuses to bring her back to life. Queenie tries her best to bring Zoe back, but she fails. That's when Cordelia joins the party. Madison is proven unworthy to hold such a title, as Cordelia masters every test and successfully brings Zoe back to life. Meanwhile, Kyle strangles Madison to death, and it turns out Cordelia was the ascending supreme all along. Cordelia plans to lead the coven in a completely new direction from her mother. She goes public with the Academy, opening the doors to anyone who is in need. She officially appoints Zoe and Queenie to the Witches Council, as hundreds of young witches are welcomed into the Academy. It's our time to thrive. What's a Supreme? You're looking at her. It's not long before we see Queenie pop up in another season of American Horror Story. In 2016, Queenie made a trip to LA to appear on The Price is Right. 
Which hotel did she book a room at? That's right, Hotel Cortez. I thought you looked familiar. I saw you. I saw you on CNN. You're one of the witches. Oh my god, oh my god. Reminder guys, make sure to check the hotel's reviews before you book your stay. Queenie immediately sensed something was off, but it was too late. She was attacked by the bloodthirsty Ramona Royale, but she held her own. Unfortunately, James March fatally stabbed her. Apparently, a witch's magic doesn't work against the ghosts, as Ramona quickly makes a meal of her. You see, I'm not alive. You may be a witch, but I'm a ghost. <sighs> as we've learned this season, Queenie had been stuck inside the hotel's walls since her death. Cordelia, now the coven supreme, visited Hotel Cortez in hopes to save Queenie. She found Queenie playing cards with her killer, James March. Let's get out of here, Queenie. Gladly. Cordelia tried her best to leave the hotel with Queenie, but after countless attempts, she gave up. Apparently, the hotel is the literal entrance into hell, and not even the coven supreme is strong enough to bring someone back. While Cordelia is sharing this story with the warlocks of the Hawthorne School, Michael Langdon is sketching his latest masterpiece. He also travels to Hotel Cortez himself to prove a point. Michael is able to free Queenie from the hotel's spell and do the same for Madison in her retail hell. To Cordelia's shock, Michael returns with both of her former students. Let's speed through this next part. Cordelia has nightmares, Michael passes the seven wonders, the white witch sings, and Madison and Behold visit the murder house. Back at the academy, Zoe and Queenie have assumed their new roles with the coven. Yes, they're part of the witches' council, but they're also helping teach the new young witches that are brought in. One witch in particular, Mallory, has shown power stronger than anything they've ever seen. This leads everyone to believe that Mallory may be the next supreme and the key to defeating the Antichrist. The coven heads back to the Hawthorne School and sets up the warlocks that plan to wipe them out. They are all burned at the stake, including Ms. Mead. Michael Langdon vows to get his revenge on Cordelia and the Coven Witches, and eventually he does so. He arrives at the Academy with Ms. Mead 2.0, a battle-ready android, and with the help of Dina's voodoo, is able to gain access into the house. Langdon and Robomead wipe out all of the young witches, as well as Bubbles, Zoe, and Queenie. Cordelia tries her best to bring them back to life, but remember, Michael has the ability to erase souls as if they never existed at all. Fingers crossed they're not gone for good. That's it for Queenie's story, guys, but let me know your favorite Queenie moment in the comments below. Also, keep it here for our weekly breakdowns and our character deep dives. Let us know what you would like to see on this channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.